It's mailbag time. Friday afternoon for us. If you're listening on Saturday, thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Adam Azer and pizza snob Dan Schneier here for your FFT mailbag. What's up, pizza snob Dan? You know, I had myself some pizza last night. Have you guys heard of Angeloni's in New Jersey? Great place. They make a thinny, thin, thin crust pizza. My other pizza snob take is thin crust pizza, crispy, well done, is the way to order a pizza. I, you, you look, honestly, if it's good pizza, the, the thin, the thick, the, the thickness doesn't matter. If it's okay. good pizza, the sauce is good. Yeah, the sauce is the key. I, I like a crust. I like something to hold on to. I, it's something to enjoy <laughs> afterwards. Um. Yeah, Dan. Dan is a bit of a pizza snob, but that's okay. Most northeasterners are. Yeah, we they, are. Oh, we we gotta, admittedly admit the water, the water here is the best. It's the best. Yes. You know, we gotta we can bottle up this water and sell it all. This is the best. You know that's <laughs> uh, basically Dan Star. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of news to get to here. Your emails at fantasyfootball at cbsi.com and a bunch of your Apple podcast questions as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasyfootball today, we will get to your questions later on in the show. Uh, and I'm sure we'll we'll come up with some goofy topic to talk, talk about at some point. Now, Kyle Pitts is out. It's amazing how much things, uh, how many news items we've had since the Friday show, which was four hours ago. But uh, Kyle Pitts is out. Dan, what do you think about Drake London this week now with Kyle Pitts out at Tampa Bay? I still feel like it's going to be a risky play this week against that defense. Like the uh, the the upside is okay. Tampa's offense gets going. Game script requires Atlanta to start throwing the football early and often, which is something they haven't wanted to do. But I still feel like that Tampa offense isn't fully clicking yet. So I think we could still be in a game like we saw last week where the Falcons are doing what they can do this year, which is run the ball really well. Uh, And so now with more attention on Drake London, I don't think that actually helps him with Pitts off the field. I think it actually hurts him because it's not like Pitts was getting many targets anyway to begin with. So this is not a good thing for me on Drake London front. I'll go the opposite way. I just think he gets yeah. too, enough target. I, I, I mean, I probably from an efficiency standpoint, it's not good, but I expect them to be throwing more because I expect them for the first time to be, you know, really trailing. They've they've been within four points in every game for the fifteenth time this week. I'm saying that, so um, I think they throw more. It leads to more targets, and I think he's Fair. in the number two three receiver range. Uh, more news here. Frank Reich is optimistic that Jonathan Taylor will play next week. So you can probably avoid that waiver wire situation. Garrett Bowles, their left tackle or the Broncos left tackle. He's out for the season and starting cornerback. Ronald Darby is out for the season for the Broncos. It was a really bad day at the office for them. Is that the worst football game you've seen this season? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be right. We were talking about that earlier. Okay. What was worse? Is that worse than, Rams Bills in week one, which was a blowout and had no yeah. sense. This at least came down to the final play. Oh, no, no, no. We want to see some touchdowns in football, Adam. We're not going to watch field goals. Well, you obviously didn't see that our listener won ten thousand dollars. Brandon, oh. there were no touchdowns. I would have loved to see okay, hundred dollars <laughs> on, on nobody scoring a touchdown. He won ten thousand dollars. That's unbelievable, Brandon. Oh my God. I, can't, I can't stop talking about it, like telling other people about it. Also, I sneaky kind of love that bet because they came in as the least uh, the fewest scoring points in the league, the Colts, and the third few is the Broncos. It's a sneaky great bet. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron Bray, I think Cameron Bray has been ruled out. Is that right? Cameron yes. Bray, or no, I don't th- the concussion. Uh they're, they're unclear, right? Or did he recently get ruled out? I think I'm going to double check. Okay. <clears throat> Zach Brook, our producer, will double check for us. Okay. And let us know about Cameron Brait. Tyreek Hill is questionable. However, he did practice on Friday. It looks like he's going to play. Zay Jones is going to play. Um, would you start Samuel. Zay Jones over Drake London? Would you go that far? No, I wouldn't go that far. No. Curtis Samuel back out there. He practiced on Friday. He's been dealing with that illness, so it looks like he'll play. <clears throat> Jadeveon Clowney seems like things are trending in the right direction for Jadeveon Clowney to play against the Chargers. That's the Browns defensive end. Terrace Marshall in a deeper league. If you want to put somebody on your, uh, ugh, I don't know. I can't even make that case, but Terrace Marshall for the Panthers has apparently had good practices and he's going to be active. He's going to play this week. Uh, Dawson Knox is out and Isaiah McKenzie as of last check was still in the concussion protocol. So, Maybe short, like the Bills are really shorthanded. Jordan Poyer, yeah. they're starting safeties out, and I think they're still going to crush the Steelers. And Amandra St. Brown was able to practice on Friday. That was interesting. Yeah, this is not a sure indication that he's going to play, right. but he did practice. And and I am not going to start Josh Reynolds if Amandra St. Brown plays. Agreed. I don't know how you feel about it. Same That's thing. the right call, I think. 
And Daniel Jones is going to play, and Kadarius Tony, Kenny Galladay, and Wandell Robinson will Ugh. not play. I'm done. I can't do it anymore with Kadarius. A- <laughs> yeah, that's a it. Hamstring injury now. You it's a me? new hamstring. Yeah, it's the other one. Come on, man. That's so. Uh, that's tough. Uh, Cameron Braid is out. Thank you, Zach Brooke, for helping out. Zach does our Friday and Saturday shows for Thomas, who has the best hair on the fantasy staff, as we all know. Uh, yeah, if you're out watching. Ben said I had a quote. I think you said terrible haircut, horrible haircut. What did you say before the show? I think you said terrible haircut. It's a terrible haircut. I mean, just take a look at it. Look at the cut right there. I mean, the top. Will you ever do something with the front of your hair, Adam? No. Do you ever plan to like comb it or put some gel in it or anything? You just like let it fly as is and just. Like, you know, like diff- little bang, you're offended. That's by what I'm thing. talking about right there. Like, how do you just get a haircut and the front looks like that? I don't get it. It's a good point. I, I don't have, I mean, I have a, a good hairline, but you have a very defined hairline. Thank you. Thank you. Mine's I have a big forehead, deep. according to the listeners. I, yeah, I, I didn't uh, see it. I wouldn't have put that up if I had seen it. That was a good <laughs> comment that that guy made. It's fair. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, look, now it's fine. I, I Yeah, but, you just have to brush it a little. That's what I'm saying. Just do a little something. I don't it, like it. I don't I like it. I like it messy. All right. I like it messy. Yeah. Well, thanks anyway. It was a really nice thing you said. <laughs> you There's said almost- something way meaner that we're not going to bring up off air. What did I say? Uh, all yeah. right. If anybody listened to Beyond the Box score, I was like, all right, guys, let's uh, let's say, what are some of your favorite stats from, from week four? And Jacob would give a stat, and they'd be like, well, here's one that Jacob tweeted. Let me read Jacob's stat. No, it's that's not exactly what happened. Five times. That's not exactly what times. happened. It's pretty much exactly what happened. It was one show, first of all. Second of all, I found those to be really good stats to back up the points I made. I had players picked out, and I was looking for stats, and I found Jacob's stats. So what? Uh, what's wrong right. with that? It's called, it's, it's called, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, I'm, I don't have the word right now, but it's good uh, to yeah, use our own content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, there's almost no better feeling than sinking into the couch for a long Sunday of football, but you know, what's even better winning $10,000 on a crazy bet, but you know, it's even better than that. Watching football on Sunday and having the chance to win free cash. With CBS Sports Football Pick'em, you can do just that. Get into the action this week to show off your knowledge with the chance to win the $1,000 weekly prize and the $100,000 jackpot. Get started now at cbsports.com slash play, or if you're on the CBS Sports app, you can click the More menu. So that's cbsports.com slash play or the More menu on the CBS Sports app. No purchase necessary. See rules for details. We have a lot of emails, but... Uh, we got one from David in College Station, Texas, and he said, for years I lived overseas and began a league with guys from various places around the planet. You can imagine some of the conversations we had about similar Camara issues, and I heard something similar on the podcast yesterday. All right, we call it, so this is what he has, and I, I think it's great because it has an acronym. The acronym yeah. is DIRT, the Designated Inactive Replacement Team, or DIRT. Each week, our managers can select one player from each position, not a DST, from their bench. Record those uh, on our league message board before any games start. And if a player is inactive at the last minute, the league manager can replace that player with the dirt player on their list. The dirt list is time stamped on our league message board so we know if it was made before any game started. This has helped us when games were starting between midnight and 6 a.m. in other parts of the world. It's not often that this happens, but when it's used, it's been a game changer for most managers. We've tweaked it over the years, but that's the basic gist of it. Just a thought. I, I, I love like this. It, Dirt. Yeah, the acronym is great, but I also love this. I mean, we have something similar in my home league. We call it contingency plan. As long as you put it on the message board, we allow it. And why, I, again, I come back to this every time when we talk about this topic, Adam. Why not? Why are we like, gun? I hate the managers who are like, yeah, you started an inactive. I get the advantage yeah, there. Yeah, like, but it's a money thing. I don't know. You're probably not paying for high, playing for high stakes. So for people who I are playing though, like stakes, we had somebody it. reach out to I us from it. Hawaii this week, Adam. Did you see that DM we got for or email we got from the guy from Hawaii? He's like, what was I supposed? What are the people supposed to do yeah. when it's like 2 a.m. their time or whatever? Yeah, I, get it. I agree. You know what? Look, I think everybody should just let people do what they want yeah. in their own league and and respect it. I got a new segment here. I'm very excited about Ooh. Dan. Tell us about Adi. Who is Adi, our colleague? Oh, Adi. Adi is. <sighs> Adi manages all of editorial on all of CBS Sports, and Adi has a very distinct personality. He will come after you, so be aware. 
He will <laughs> always take shots at you, whether that be on Twitter, on uh, various, uh, you know, I've seen him. It, the, it ranges far and wide where he'll take the shots. He's very sarcastic. So expect sarcasm at all times. And listen, he at times it feels like, at least from his conversations with me, that he thinks he could do our job better than we can, Adam. <laughs> it really does feel like that sometimes. So Adi will come after you. If you have a bad take, he will never let it down. So what, what did he do this time? Where are we, yeah. where are we going? Well, with it, it extends to it, his, his assault on you extends to Slack. So this is a new segment oh, yeah. called Adi Trashes Dan. I got a Slack oh, message for Adi. God. He says, Week two, I offer Saquon Barkley and Mooney to Dan Schneier for Jonathan Taylor. Week three, I offer Barkley and Noah Brown for Jonathan Taylor. This week... For Taylor and Allen Robinson, but For yes. Taylor and Allen Robinson. This week, he spends $7 in fab to sign Mooney while having to play without Jonathan Taylor. Ask him the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> I don't know what the question is there, but... The question is... Know. How bad am I to decline that offer two weeks in a row? I guess. Um, I don't know. Would you have done that, Adam? At either at oh, either point? No. No. Right? Yeah. Of course not. You did the right thing. Let's okay. trash Adi. Adi, we, you can you know you can give it out, but we're you're gonna have to take it too because you're you know we're gonna trash you. So <laughs> leave Dan alone. And Adi, I believe, had a big mistake last year in our in our work league finals. I'm going to have to try to look back to see the semis or the finals, wherever he lost at. He had a big lineup mistake that I'm now going to have to track, look back, track. Oh, I'm very out. curious. Yeah, I'll bring that if, up. I'll, if it's such a bad it. if it's such a bad lineup mistake, then we're just going to start calling lineup mistakes Adi's. <laughs> I like it. All right. All right. Let's read some emails. Fantasy football at CBSI.com. Here's a trade. Most of these emails are trade questions. It's from Keenan. Uh, Give up. Cortland Sutton and Chase Edmonds. This is oh a PPR 10 team league. Give up Sutton and Edmonds, get Kareem Hunt, Zach Ertz, and Zay Jones. His tight end is Kyle Pitts. Okay. I think I like this trade. He also needs a tr uh, running back. His right. running backs are Dylan, Edmonds, Akers, Algier, and Rashad White. So he gives up Sutton, who you'd have to say is the best player in the deal. And Chase Edmonds. He gets Kareem Hunt, Zach Ertz, and Zay Jones. So Kareem Hunt is a player who was discussed on the podcast this week as a potential buy low player. And I agree with that take. I'm big on Kareem Hunt. You look at Ertz, you can wonder, is he going to go downhill a bit when Hopkins is back? I know that's some of the speculation, but you look at last year and he was pretty good in that offense. So I kind of like him. Zay Jones is just like kind of a PPR guy and this is full team PPR. So he kind of has some value there as well. He always gets, I mean, when healthy, he's going to get five, six, seven targets a game. Sudden. Down for me, Adam. He's trending down. That whole Broncos offense. Remember, we talked about a couple weeks ago. Are we buying low? I mean, now I'm done with them. With Garrett Bowles out for the year, I'm pretty much done with them. Um, and so, Chase Edmonds. There's the upside of when, if, and when Raheem Mostert gets hurt. But I like this trade. I don't think I like. I don't like giving up the best player in the deal. Who's I feel the like best player? Is it definitely sudden? To me, it's not even a question. I, I like as bad as he's been. I think he scored 12 or more PPR fantasy points in every game. You know, he's got a high yes. floor. He's the what is only Hunt guy that, uh, not that, he scored about eight PPR fantasy points three straight weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, he's he's like the only guy that Russell Wilson throws to. So I'm not, I, you've got Jefferson and Diggs. So you want to trade Sutton, that's fine. But I think Sutton should get you more than, it's basically to me, it's like Kareem Hunt and Zach Ertz for Sutton. So it's not a terrible trade, it, you know, but I, I I wouldn't do it personally. From 8-8, eight, eight, dear Bob Sacamano, Jay Ryman Schneider, Lomez and the Lopper. This is, is this, is this Breaking Bad universe? No, Lomez, not Lopez. All right, all right Zach, I see you backstage. Go ahead, you can join the show. Bob Sacamano sounds is. familiar. Oops. Oh, you're, you're you got to unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Pretty sure, pretty sure it's Seinfeld. Oh, wow. Oh, it Seinfeld. is Seinfeld. You know, I do like Seinfeld. I'm not going to lie. But <sighs> I, don't I know, know it, this? don't know it that well. Yeah, I don't know it as well as I should. Like, if you give me a curb reference, I'll hit it every time. But for Seinfeld, right. I can't do that. Yeah, we got to watch Seinfeld. All right. Well, I've watched Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. He's, he's like, the dingo ate your baby. Remember he quoted that? He's like, obviously <laughs> Seinfeld. All right. Uh, maybe it's time to admit that Alec Pierce is a legit player and Michael Pittman will not be a top 10 guy. I la I got laughed out of my drafts when I took T. Higgins over Michael Pittman. He's solid, but he's no top dog. Oh, those are Kramer's friends. Oh. The last one was a serial killer from Seinfeld. Yeah, the Sacramento one. I knew I knew it from somewhere, but 
Yeah, it's an interesting point. I, I still feel like that they're being held back by Matt Ryan. Like even Michael Pittman, if you look at some of like not to reference someone else here, Adam, but someone I really respect in the industry, Matt Harmon, who charts every single receiver every offseason, his reception perception data meant Michael Pittman was with the elites. And I still feel like it's an issue. It's a Matt Ryan issue more than Pittman versus Pierce. But I did like Pierce a lot. Me and Dave, we did the draft profiles this offseason. We loved Alec Pierce's tape. I mean, he is not just a big receiver. He has some speed. He has some ability to get in and out of his break. So it could be a case of both receivers are good and both are being held back by Matt Ryan. But obviously last night, it looked like you would rather have Pierce. So I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's as defined as we hoped originally with Pittman versus Pierce as far as the, the reason to like Pittman so much was the target volume. But ultimately, I think this is a Matt Ryan problem. Yeah, and I think it's a little hard to judge Pierce. Don't ever judge people when they face the Broncos, you know, it's just, you're just really difficult circumstances. So especially when Pittman was getting covered by their top cornerback. So yeah. I mean, it was Darby, but then when Darby got hurt. It was, it was Darby. At first it was both of them. And then it was really mostly Sertan. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the issue I had with, with Pittman was I didn't think he was a great player. So I didn't know he hadn't proven that yet. So when you're talking about taking Pittman over a guy like Tyree kill, that was a tough sell. Right. Um, even a guy like T Higgins, but the target, I think the volume is still going to be really good for him. I, I, I would, you know, I would buy low, but it's not going to be like a top five guy, but I think he could be a top 12 guy. But it's, you know, it's hard to like name 12 great receivers, name 12 receivers that who are the best 12 receivers in fantasy right now. Top yeah. Of my I mean, head. You, you've <laughs> got cup Jefferson. We think chase, maybe Diggs, Higgins. Higgins should definitely be in that Diggs for sure. Diggs Adams. I think Tyreek Hill. Hill for sure. Higgins for sure. AJ Brown, I think, has earned that. Amonra St. Brown has earned that. Amonra for sure, if healthy. And who else? And then it gets, well, Higgins. I want to throw Higgins in there. Yeah, I, I was in CD Lamb for sure. Oh, yeah, Lamb. Good. Lamb for sure. Um, I'm trying to just think of my preseason rankings and how it's played out. Because, like, Sutton, I wanted to put in there. I can't put in there. Um, I thought there was a chance preseason. Now it's looking awful, this take that Alan oh, Robinson gets there's in there. There's Debo. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I don't think Debo is a slam dunk. I think Evans and Godwin have a chance. Evans for sure. I think Cortland Sutton has a chance. Not going to lie. I think, um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not pretty. Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk has a chance. Kirk's interesting just because of the target volume and PPR. Um, yeah, it's it's not what we expected it to be at receiver. All all, all us receiver drafters are, are not are, are struggling a bit at this time. Oh. Everyone is. Yeah, All right, so let, let's uh, go a little faster here. Take way too much time on those questions. This is from Kevin, 10-team half PPR league. Russell Wilson's killing me. Should I drop Russell Wilson for Jared Goff? <sighs> I mean, I might. I, I honestly might at this point, Adam, because Russell Wilson just lost Garrett Bowles, his left tackle. That's going to be a big problem. The Broncos don't have any replacement there. It's already an offensive line that hasn't been, well, either he hasn't been protecting him well or, or Russell Wilson has just been Russell Wilsoning it and, and taking too much time, taking too much sacks, not getting rid of the football. There's big issues with that offense to me, Adam. Uh, and I would say that without Garrett Bowles for the rest of the season, I would take Jared Goff over, especially because Jared Goff produced without Amon Ross St. Brown. That was an eye-opening performance from Goff. and just goes to show how much of an edge that you can have when you have the best or the second best offensive line in football. Yeah, he went into that game because Jared Goff completing 59% of his passes. Um, so I guess no, like was, I don't know what he what it is now, but uh yeah, I mean here's the thing about dropping Wilson for Goff. Goff's on a bye next week. So oh, yep. it doesn't really do you any good. Not yet. <laughs> AC from the Music City. Hey, Chris, Gordy, Vernie, Vern, and Ted. Chris, Gordy, Vern, and Ted. That's easy. Uh, some kind of hockey thing. No, that's a good guess, but it's stand by me. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I should be shopping any running backs to upgrade at wide receiver or if I should just hold. It's a two-receiver league. It's half PPR. Would you try to flip Galvin Cook, Aaron Jones, James Robinson, or Damian Pierce for a receiver like Jamar Chase, Tyree Kill, or Devontae Adams? 100%. Yes. This is a great time to do it, too. You have the depth at running back. And like you said, you can buy low on a player like Chase. Chase is a Chase is probably the number one player I would target here. See what you can get for Chase. Um, look, as Adam said on the last give podcast, for give for Chase. Give for Chase, yeah. As Adam said on the last podcast, like there, it's not like this is going – we figured it – we've seen last year Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, they figured out how to beat two high safety looks and get explosive plays. So at some point, Chase is going to have those explosive games for you. And by – he. 
you the upside of getting a chase versus I mean, you'd probably have to go up, I think, maybe James Robinson and Dalvin for chase and something. That would probably be. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to give up two of them. No, but you get you give up Dalvin for chase straight up. Can you give up Dalvin for chase straight up? I don't think that you think a manager is going to do that. Dalvin, you're not really selling high on Dalvin. Either. Dalvin hasn't broken out either. I mean, they went basically back to back and it went. Yeah, possible. you could try it. All right, I got to keep going here from 10 yep. in Toronto. Has the Amonra St. Brown hype gone too far? No. Is Ezekiel Elliott on a major downswing? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I would call it a major downswing. I feel like it's been trending in this direction for a while now. Yeah, still curious to see. He just needs a really good offense. He's not going to create. He's not going to create a good offense. He needs to be part of one. Right. And if that can make them one, then I think he can yeah. be a lot better. Can Chris Godwin come back to full health? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Yeah. Who said, who's to say he isn't? All right, this is from Alfredo in Hops Country, USA. I don't know. Hey, we got, we got the best hops right here in New York. Huh? <laughs> hops has got to be Vermont. No idea. Okay. All right, non PPR league. He should know, he said. Okay, we're not Heath. No, we're not Heath. Oh, we're not Heath. <laughs> Let's see what, what kind of heat side I can get. How's, what's, how's this one? <laughs> All right. Great. Start three honest. running backs uh, this week. You got to sit one. Okay. Miles Sanders, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, and Jamal Williams. Um, that's a tough, that's a tough spot. What if I said I would sit Kamara out of those? Is that crazy? That is originally what I said. I yeah. responded to this email and I said Kamara, but either him or Sanders. I'm definitely starting Cook and Williams. I can't, um, I can't sit Sanders right yeah, now. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit Kamara. Yeah. This is from Levi. I need a running back, a wide receiver, and a flex. All right, A.J. Dillon or Khalil Herbert? Oh, that's a big one, too. David Montgomery still, we don't know. He's a game-time right. assistant, but uh, A.J. Dillon or Khalil Herbert? I think they'll probably tend to lean to be more conservative on Montgomery given another week. So I'll go Herbert there. Yeah. If Montgomery plays, go Dylan. If Montgomery sure. plays, go Herbert. We need a wide receiver. Mike Williams, Gabe Davis, Damian Harris. Oh, sorry. I didn't see Damian Harris there at the end. Yeah. Right. I think it's a receiver and a flex, right? Mm hmm. So I'll go Williams and Davis. Okay. This is. N oh, I thought. Okay. This is not. All right. Okay. I'm going to go with. Khalil Herbert. Uh, Mike Khalil. Williams is the wide receiver. Yeah. Khalil Herbert if Monty's out. Damian Harris is the running back if Montgomery is in. I would start Harris okay. over Dylan. And if it is... Hmm, do I want to go Gabe Davis? I think I'm going to go Dylan over Davis. I'm fine with that, actually, as I look back at it. Especially because we don't know if it's PPR or not. If it's not PPR, then I could definitely go Dylan over Davis. This is from Rob. Tight end premium PPR flex, pick one. Pat Fryermuth, Logan Thomas, Michael Thomas, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jeff Wilson. Hmm. I think I'm going Fryermuth. Yeah. Interesting. I like the I like the whenever you have the rookie quarterback in making one of his first starts, tight end is a nice spot because it's it's an easy to get to the tight end through your progressions. If things aren't going well, if you get if you drop back and the tight end is always kind of your easy outlet, and I feel like Firemuth will be that. I think Firemuth's going to have a big game this week. Okay. I would probably go with Jeff Wilson. Yeah, it's not a popular pick, the one I'm making. I just have a feeling on Firemuth. We'll see what happens really, there. Not agreeing a lot on today. No, we usually do, or do we not? Yeah. Um, I feel like we yeah, do. Other than the Oreo thing? Yeah, I think we well, do. Oh, on, on any take that's not football, we never agree. <laughs> Douglas from Washington, PPR League. Give up. Tomorrow, Brady, which is a terrific autocorrect. Uh, <laughs> Keenan Allen and Jeff Wilson. Give up Brady, Keenan okay. Allen, and Jeff Wilson. Get Mahomes and Derrick Henry. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. How the hell is this even possible, this deal? From Ken in <laughs> Florida. What Flex, a league. Uh, who are we flexing? Jeff Wilson, J.K. Dobbins, or Chris Godwin in half PPR? Uh, Godwin for me. Yeah, I'll go Godwin. From Chris in Denver, 12-team half PPR. I'm starting Aaron Jones. I need two of three. Hmm. James Robinson, Damian Pierce, and J.K. Dobbins. <sighs> Damn, this is tough. Uh, I'm going to go Pierce and Robinson here. I just trust the volume so much more there. Definitely going Robinson. It's close between Pierce and Dobbins, but I, I guess I'll go Pierce. From just 
locked in. Uh, going again, going with Pierce is contrary to everything I believe about fantasy. I'm not, I don't want to take the Texans running back over the Ravens running back. I said that last week because I thought the Texans game script would be so bad that Pierce would ha- wouldn't be able to you know have a good week for you. And I benched Pierce in some spots that I shouldn't have benched Pierce benched Pierce in, and I regret that. And I'm at the point now with Pierce where I have to start him every week because he's the only one getting touches in that back. He's the only one getting rushing attempts. I should say in that back. All right, I'm all right. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. All right. This is from Justin. It, okay. Here's a weird format: two point per reception. One point for 10 receiving yards, but two points for every 10 rushing yards. Wow. And one point for a rushing first down. Jeez. This is like the type of league where if you ever had, like, they don't do, we don't see this as much anymore, but if you have a Christian McCaffrey type, when the old Christian McCaffrey, when he's getting like 120 targets a year, he just, you, he just wins you the league. Like, you don't even need anyone else starting almost. Yeah. No kidding. All right. Who are you starting in this crazy format? Connor, Bateman, Lazard, DJ Moore, or Juju? It's only one uh, final flex. Um, <sighs> point for every. I'm going to go with Lazard here. I really think Lazard is due for a massive week against the Giants. Okay, and this is Dustin in Miami. Dear Colonel, Dave, Ronald, and King. This is like, uh, this has got to be fast food. Dave from Wendy's, Ronald from McDonald's, Colonel Sanders, and Burger King. That's good, yeah. I I'm not sure how one. I didn't get that. I really I don't finally know. got one. Your favorite fa- so long. favorite fast food fries? Oh, favorite fast food fries. This is the one I have a very strong take on. McDonald's by far and away. People are now <laughs> saying Wendy's is better than McDonald's, and there's like there's a huge debate on this. How is that a pot? No, it's McDonald's for sure. If you want to throw in like the Arby's curly fries, which I don't really, I've never really had Arby's. I've had it once, and I've had oh, the it's curly good. fries. It's really good. Yeah, they're amazing. If you want to throw that into the mix, if you count that, sure, I'll throw that in, and I'll probably say maybe it can be better than McDonald's. But uh, you've, traditional fries, it's McDonald's by far. You struck a nerve with Zach. Well, Zach, what is it? I don't know. He's he's mad at you for something. What what's your pick, Zach? Your favorite fries? Probably gonna go Chick Fil A. I don't get them that often, but they're much better than that. Oh, no, the Chick Fil A fries are so bad. bad. Those bad. They're, they're, they're very they're overrated. Like potatoy. They're not yeah. good. Yeah, very, I'm they're with one of the worst version of waffle fries I've ever had. The Chick Fil A waffle fries. One of my favorite things about McDonald's fries. Is, I like waffle fries too. That I mean, look, Zach, I like them, but you got to season them a little bit. Bring your own yeah. seasoning. I, no, 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 that's not how it works. One of my favorite things about McDonald's fries is the way your car smells. When you yes, I love it. Oh, and that's they're so salty, and that's such a good thing. It adds so much to how salty they are. Oh, very healthy, Dan. Very good message for all. I'm not people. a healthy person. I've made that clear. I like cream in the Oreos, salt <laughs> yeah. on my fries, salt it up. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I need one a running back and a flex in non PPR. We got Montgomery and Herbert. Raheem Mostert, Ramondre Stevenson, Chris Godwin, and Marquise Brown. <sighs> tough ones. Tough ones here. Non-PPR. <sighs> All right. So, Khalil Herbert is an easy one for me. Yep. If Montgomery Same. is out. I'll, well, let's rank our top two if Montgomery is in. Okay. We're assuming Montgomery plays. So, the top two would be... God... Godwin would be my flex no matter. Uh, actually, Marquise Brown, I love. Marquise Brown's my flex. And then if Montgomery plays, I think I'm going with Ramondre Stevenson. Okay. I am. I support that, except I like Godwin better than Marquise Brown. But I understand. This is a safer play for sure. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll read your Apple podcast questions. We'll get to your YouTube questions. If anybody has a fun topic in YouTube that you want, Dan and I to disagree on. I mean, it won't be on purpose, but we'll obviously disagree. Go ahead and, and do that. Please like our video, by the way. We did agree on the Tate's take. Oh, Tate's, yeah. yeah unreal. We had a uh, listener, we had a listener text, uh, be like, I've never heard of Tate's, and I sent him like where to get, and now he's ordering it. So if you're listening again, let us know your review on Tate's. Uh, email me or Adam. I'm very excited to hear because apparently it's not like a thing all around the country. I, I felt like that might be the case because it's from like Southampton, New York, is where Tate's is from. But I thought it had reached like the glo- I thought it had reached at least uh, it's, it should it yeah. should be it should be a mainstream cookie definitely um okay uh, by the way uh, Dan I told Dave and Jamie on Friday but I'll tell I had rabbit paella last night in New York City whoa yeah I have so many questions yeah. like, I didn't even th- first of all I'll start by saying I thought if I had to guess I would think you would never the type of person who would try rabbit paella I would be like I just a hundred percent right uh, I had almost no choice. I, I, I was really no choice. 
it was really, it just did not work out for me. I, I went, I, I saw my buddy at Comic-Con okay. and you know, I, he lives in LA. So we went out afterwards and it was a bunch of his, it was his friends from college and, and I knew them. Uh, I'd met them previously, but he, one of them, uh, two of them were like kind of from the city and, or lived a lot, a lot stayed a while in the city, whatever, whatever. So they kind of knew the place. So I said, Oh, where are we going? He said, all right, I know a perfect place. So we went to Hudson Yard. You've been to Hudson Yards? Yes. Hudson Yards is fun. It's cool. Right. Yeah. And I've never been there. So we went to Hudson Yards, but it was like way too swanky for me. Wait, th- okay. I wanted to go to some, I wanted to I go love to, that like, take, by the bar way. That, that had a burger with cheddar. Yes. Yeah, that's all I, I love wanted. that take right there, by the but way. I, that's what I want. And that's what my buddy, uh, this is one of my best friends since I'm four years old. That's what oh, we do. Awesome. We used to go to Steak and Shake all the time. Right. We, when we lived in the city. You don't city need fancy, we, swanky. Exactly. Yeah. When we lived in the city when we were younger, he and I and one other guy, we would go to Boston Market, you know, in New York <laughs> City. <laughs> on 23rd Street. That's a Michael. That's a real Michael Scott. Yeah, right totally. <laughs> totally. So we don't we do the finer things, but we, he took us to this tapas place, little Spain in, in, uh, in the, in Hudson yards. Okay. And it just didn't have a lot of good options. And I'm walking around and I see chicken and rabbit pie. There was some chicken in there. It's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. $18. <laughs> never eating rabbit again. Never. I didn't never like tried it rabbit. I don't plan to. What does it taste like? It's, is Talk. it gamey? Yeah, it's gamey. It's Ugh, gamey. gamey. You could you turn me off of, if you say anything's gamey, I'm done immediately. Yeah, it's too gamey. Why does any what if, if anyone describes a meat as gamey, why would that meat still be like popularly sold? Like who wants gamey? Has anyone ever been like that's yeah. gamey and I like it? It's a, it was real gamey tonight. It's uh, tougher people than us, yeah. But I would say <laughs> let me tell you at yeah, one we, point at one point I went up to my my friends friends and I like them, they're good guys. It's like, "Hey, <laughs> Does anybody want to like go to a you know a place just get a burger or something? Like, no, I'm good. I'm just gonna finish my drink and like I'm, I'm not interested in that. Basically, well, like I completely rejected, completely rejected. Yeah. That's terrible. I mean, it stinks for you, but I, I'm I'm happy you made it through. You ate the whole. Did you eat the whole thing? No. Oh God. No. Okay. No, you just threw it out. Yeah. It was... You just went home hungry. That's devastating. I had yeah. I had some some pasta when I got home. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what you went? Oh my God. That's terrible. All right, let's uh, take a break here. When we come back, we'll get to your Apple Podcast questions and your YouTube questions on fantasy football today. Apple Podcast, leave us a five-star review. Please let everybody know why you love our show. Let's help the show keep on growing. We appreciate it. This is from the Fantasy Baller. Give up Jonathan Taylor, get Miles Sanders and Cortland Sutton. Jonathan Taylor for Miles Sanders and Cortland Sutton. It's amazing we have to answer. The, like it, We're at this point with Taylor, I guess, where we have to decide these things. Taylor has already been ruled like, good to go for next week, which to me is a great sign that this was just a minor injury. They were trying not to, you know, on a short week, really give him a risk of re-injury. So I would not do this trade as much as I like Miles Sanders. He has an injury history that is actually much bigger or bigger is not the right word, but he has a more concerning injury history than Jonathan Taylor. I've already said my piece on Cortland Sutton, who I'm now down on rest of season after the Bulls injury. Um, And so I I wouldn't do this one. Dave from Hohokus, New Jersey. There we go. We got a New Jersey. We got a North Jersey in. Let's go. Hey, this is email's the best that they, uh, best deli, best deli in the in the country. Fiori's in Hoboken, New Jersey. Check it out. Best you what? In there, Adam. Best deli, Italian. Oh deli. no! You have to get a chance when you get a chance. Go on a Saturday to Fiori's in Hoboken, New Jersey, and get the special, which is roast beef, fresh mutts, and the gravy. It's so good. Yeah, I knew you were gonna like the way I said mutts. You wish you were. You are the biggest Italian oh, wannabe. Oh, 100% the biggest Italian wannabe. My, one of my best friends, shout out Steve Milano, I grew up with since I was real young. He always says Schneier for the, his entire life has wished he was Italian. <laughs> He's right. He's right. <laughs> do what I do. Marry an Italian girl. There you go. All right, grade the trade. Give Jamal Williams and Terry McLaurin. Get Alvin Kamara and Drake London. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So we're losing Williams and McLaurin. We're getting, oh, wait, never mind. I, I, I'm all yeah, in on this one. This is a snap trade. Yeah. Snap for a second, trade. I was like, uh, I don't know. But no, snap trade. Do it. Josh from a town in central Florida. Oh, wait, you didn't get to the best part of this email. Rank these. Oh, Reese's right. Cups, Reese's Sticks, which he considers highly underrated, Dave considers, and Reese's Pieces. I have a pretty strong take on this. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I don't think okay. I've ever had Reese's Sticks. I'm sorry to say that, but I would say definitely cups, cup sticks, pieces. A hundred percent cup sticks, pieces. Sticks are underrated, but nothing's as good as the cups. Pieces are terrible. Reese's pieces are terrible. trash candy. Uh, you gotta, compare- you listen, let me let me tell you a little something. 
you 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 never know what's mm-hmm. gonna be a sponsor. So never have oh, a stake boy. that strong. Okay. <laughs> You're so right. Just never have a See, this is strong. why he's the veteran and the host on the show because he knows that kind of thing. We could Zach find a way to edit. I don't think out, they're terrible. I think they're good. They're peanut butter. I mean, they, they, <sighs> peanut butter Not- MMs are just Reese's pieces. Right, but you need to have a more of a peanut butter ratio. When the peanut butter chocolate ratio is that thin of pe- from a peanut butter standpoint, it's not great. Coming from the guy, this makes no sense. Coming from the guy who wants all cream and no cookie. No, that's right. what I'm saying. More peanut butter, I want. Oh, you want more peanut? Yes, butter. that's what I'm saying. It's not oh. enough peanut butter in the pieces. Okay, then you probably like the peanut peanut butter M and M's. Yeah, I those think- are great. Pick three. They're like the same can. No, they're not. They're much I bigger. Everyone. Them. Oh, my God. Does anyone think the Reese's Pieces and peanut butter M&Ms are the same ratio of peanut butter? You get a nice chunk of peanut butter in a peanut butter M&M. Pick three in PPR. Najee Harris, Miles Sanders, CEH, Damian Pierce, and James Robinson. Full PPR. Um Wow, this is a tough one. These are imagine having running backs on your team that are these five. Uh, I know I'm sitting Najee, and I'm like the easy ones oh. for me are start James Robinson and sit Najee. Oh, I Harris. can't wait till Adi hears this because I'm with <laughs> yeah. you. He, he's the biggest Najee truther, and you could find at this point. Um, and he's a Bengals fan, which I always find about that's so weird. Uh, but I'll just say bench Najee for sure. I agree with that. Who are the three you went with Adam? Right, so I didn't go with three yet. I James okay. Robinson's a start, so it's two out of Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards Elair, and Damian Pierce, and I'm gonna sit. I'm going to sit Damian Pierce. I am too. The The receiving role is not there yet for him. Am I really going to sit him or Clyde? All right, I'll, I'll sit Pierce. Oh, I, I like Clyde a lot in this game. The, the Chiefs score so many points in these games against the Raiders. All right, this is from E-U-Y-S-D-H-U-T-F-Y. I okay. wouldn't even try. It's not New something I would want to try either. All right, a running back, a wide receiver, and a flex. So we need Penny, Pierce, or Dobbins and, and Khalil Herbert. One RB, one wide receiver, one flex. Let's Penny. do it RB first. Penny, okay. Pierce, Dobbins, Khalil Herbert. This is, do we get PPR or not here? Do we know? No. So it's to me, it's Herbert <sighs> if Montgomery's out and Pe- Pierce if Montgomery plays. Yeah, I was going to say Pierce if it's non PPR, definitely for me, but I can I can go with Herbert then Pierce. Wide receiver, Devontae Smith, Mike Williams, Brandon Williams Gomes. for me for sure. Yep. And then the flex is going to be Penny, Pierce, Dobbins, Herbert, Smith, Cooks, basically. It's Cooks or Smith, if it's full PPR for me, I want to start by saying that. Um, half PPR, I'm going to go with Cooks or Smith again. Non-PPR, I'm going to go with whoever you didn't go with, Pierce or, or Herbert. Well, I'm not going to go with Herbert if Montgomery plays. I'd go Dobbins. And right, right. Dobbins, yeah, correct. I just don't think Montgomery's going to end up playing this game, but he might. Either. From Chucky Buckle. Uh, okay. half PPR two player keeper league. Would you make this trade? Give up CD Lamb and Naheem Hines and Jahan Dotson, get Cortland Sutton, Ken Walker, Garrett Wilson, and a fourth round pick. Uh, I wish I had a better feel for what this keeper league, how this keeper league plays out to know what the value of a fourth round pick is, but I'm just going to go by general keeper league value for a fourth round pick. Uh, because you're going to like part of this trade is you're getting Walker and Wilson for next year. Right. And you have to assume we don't know the rounds they were drafting at him, but let's just assume maybe like seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th for both of them. Is that fair? Somewhere between seven and 10th. Sure. So I would, it, it's kind of like, where are you at with this team? Are you looking to rebuild right now? It's one and three. He's one and three. Okay. Yeah. I would do this trade for sure. All right. Let's go to JB. Would you trade away Damian Pierce for Keenan Allen? Damian Pierce for Keenan Allen. Yeah, I would. Would you, Adam? I don't, you know, I just don't know when he's coming back. I know. I'm getting, that's why I was such a long pause. I'm like scared. Whenever it's the, whenever it's the, um, those, what are, what are they called? The, I don't know what soft Brian, tissue. Soft tissue. Whenever it's the soft tissue injuries, I always get super scared. Remember when you asked me if I knew what an in breaking route was? No, I didn't ask you if you knew what an in breaking route. Oh, did yes, I ask you? you Challenge well, me. Like, what's an in breaking route? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think that's oh, because man, let me let me you, first have to figure out what play action means. <laughs> well, to be fair, you were like anti fragility. Whoever uses this term, I've never totally heard different. it. Give me a break. Uh, no, that wasn't what that was like. You were just you had just said in breaking route like six times uh, and in a half in, yeah. in 30 seconds. And I was like, God, you really said that a lot. And then you challenged me. <laughs> I said it too much. Anyway, um, it's pretty obvious to me that Keenan Allen had a setback without being a doctor because he, mm. he left practice last week. And I don't think he has practice at all this week. So yeah, and they originally said that was only going to be like a one week thing. So that's not. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, so here we are in week five. All right, this is from D.A. Clark. Would you make this trade? Nick Chubb, Michael Thomas, and either Najee Harris or Jeff Wilson for Jonathan Taylor, Christian Kirk, and Miles Sanders. Yes. But I yes. would definitely do Wilson over Harris. Yeah, probably. But yes. Well, Wilson, I mean, Mitchell's Taylor. coming back at some point. At least Harris is going to probably have that job all year, even though Warren does look better, better than him. Shout out, Adi. <laughs> <laughs> From Jay Karatnik, give up Tyler Algier and T. Higgins. Get Jamar Chase. <laughs> or oh, oh, I see. Algier and DJ Moore for Chris Olave. I like the second one better, Me to too. be honest. Yeah. Olave's I really like trading for Olave right now, if you can, before he before he really settles in as like a top 15 option, which I think he will be rest of season. Oh, I have a team name. Okay. Oil of Olave. What was it? Say it again. Oil of Olave. Oil of Olave. Oil of Olave. I don't, I don't know that reference. What's it from? Uh, like a skin product or something. <laughs> what? <Oil of laughs> Why do you, is that like a known thing? I think so. I feel like it used to be a lot more popular. Than, I bet Zach Brooke has no idea what Oil of Olave. He doesn't. Uh, <laughs> oil of Olave is, is pretty brilliant. Uh, I'm gonna, How I about... How about uh? There's better ones for Olave, right? Like uh, live live and let Olave or or something with that. Ugh, That's terrible. No, no, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. I was thinking to live and let it die. The Joseph would die one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me some time. I'll come back next week with a better Olave. You still haven't told us Adi's terrible lineup decision. No, I no. I have to research that. I have to go back into last oh. year's league, see what he did. He did something stupid. I remember. I'm going to try to remember. It. Take that long? It you can't do that. I'll answer a couple questions. You can't do that. <laughs> no, not. I don't like to be distracted during a podcast. I'm trying to give it my all. All right, from Shecky Z. We all want to know what Adying is going to end up being. Uh, Shecky Z's two and two, but he's the second highest scoring team in the league. Uh, he has Russell Wilson and Tua, so he wants a quarterback upgrade. He gives up Nick Chubb. Oh boy, it's a big trade. Mick Chubb, Tyreek Hill, Christian Kirk, and Damian Harris. Damn. He gets Josh Allen, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, and A.J. Dillon. So if you break it down, he goes from Tyreek to Chase, which we would say is an upgrade probably, but not necessarily. He goes from Damian Harris to A.J. Dillon. Yeah. Maybe that's even. Downgrade. Downgrade? Okay. He goes from... Nick Chubb to Joe Mixon. Downgrade for me. And then he goes from Christian Kirk to Josh Allen. Massive upgrade. I like I liked this trade because, man, my mindset has changed. And he has Russ and Tua as his QBs, too. We don't know anything about. We He might not play again this season. I hope that's not the case for him. But I also don't know. I just hope whatever he whatever's best for him long term, he decides. But Russ, we've already described. We're, we're both pretty down on. I don't know if you're as down. Alave Garden. That's a great name, by Alave the way. Alave Garden is a very um, That's so good. Uh, but uh, how did we not think of that? I love this trade because a lot of what we discussed on this podcast this year, I've, my mindset on quarterback has changed a lot. There's the haves and haves nots at this point at the quarterback position. And Josh Allen is just getting you so many guaranteed points every week. So I think he's by far and away the best asset in this trade. So I like the deal. This is from Patrick. I sent out Clyde, Russell Wilson, and Njoku. Okay. And I got back Mark Andrews. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's good. It's real good. Really all right, good. YouTube, it's your time to shine. What do you got? Any questions at all? Uh, all right, let's see. Who should I use to replace Pitts? Jawan Johnson or Logan Thomas or Taysom Hill or Will Disley? If Logan Thomas plays, I would go with Thomas. I agree. If he doesn't play, I'd go with Taysom Hill. Yeah, Taysom is the best chance at a touchdown outside of that. Would you trade away in a super flex league? You already He has... Ooh. He has Dak Prescott, Geno Smith, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Would you trade away Kirk Cousins for Chris Olave? Yes. You would? That means 100%. you have to start that means Gino. You have to start Gino or Jimmy sure. G all year. No, because he's Dak. It's a super flex league. Oh, oh, I totally messed this up. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I would not do it because it's super flex. All right. Yeah, How about? Says, yeah, you did. You did. I mean, what I like it said super flex. You, 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 you're right. I did, but you you took a lot. You were really happy. You were excited <laughs> about me messing that one up. <laughs> you're. I was. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cooks and Pollard, or DJ Moore and Travis Etienne. Rest of season. Cooks and Pollard. Uh, yeah, but uh, yes, but 
ETN is such a bust. Uh, ETN, Pollard, or Hunt in full PPR this Hunt, week. for sure. Yeah. And Godwin or Marquise Brown? This is a tough one because, like he says, the matchup isn't great for Brown, but I love the Brown role right now, man. You look at the target volume. You look at where he's being utilized on the field in the red zone as well. There's still a chance for him to break a big one, to get a big bomb at some point, which he hasn't done yet, and he will at some point with Kyler. I'm going Brown. Josh Palmer, Kareem Hunt, or Najee Harris in the flex? Hunt for me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, my God. Adi's going to hate that one. That one's going to be <laughs> Hunt over Najee Harris. Full PPR pick two, George Pickens, Garrett Wilson, Zeke, Dylan, and DJ Moore. Full PPR, so... Dylan is the only one I feel... I know. Dylan's the only one I feel fully confident in. I'm going Dylan and Pickens. That is what I was going to say. Sorry, I'm yawning right now. How are you yawning? It's not even the morning anymore. It has. Well, it might be for you. Like 11 o'clock. Now, uh, how am I yawning? I, you know, not a lot of sleep these days, my man. I understand. I was uh, that. Well, you just had a big night out in the city eating rabbit. Exactly. I had a, I had a lot of trouble with the game last night. I thought it was such a bad game. Well, I got home. I didn't start watching the game until 10. Oh, you did a DVR. For, oh, I like no, that. It's, I can't DVR it. It's on Amazon Prime. Oh, you're right. There's this option. You can start that. You can start it from the beginning. That's what I thought. And it didn't work. Oh, so really? I watched it live beginning in the third quarter. And then I went back and I watched the first half after the right. game ended. And then it was just a mess. It was Then I got, I don't know, I lost like a chunk of the game. It bothered me. It wasn't, uh, the, it wasn't the worst game to miss. <laughs> to miss I, chunks that's, of. that's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Golf or Herbert this weekend? Herbert. Herbert, yeah. Deep dish or pan pizza? Very good question. Um, I'm going to say deep dish. I am not as anti deep dish as you would expect from a smug northern New Jersey, uh, you know, pizza snob. Because I've been to, and then let me say this though. Having said that, there is a clear cut best deep dish pizza in Chicago, and it's Lou Malnati's. It is not any David, of your other I choices. Think Dave agrees with you on that. Yes, it is not any of your other choices. You're wrong. Lou Malnati's is the best sauce and the best. It's the best. You're yeah, hey. walking here. Hey, I'm walking here. Hey, Look, yeah, it was this, this Lou Malnati's. I swear they, they imported Malnati's. it from New York. I guarantee that, it, man. Half the reason I like it is because it, you can say Lou Malnati's. It's a very nice, like, Italian name. You get to you get to roll off the tongue. But it is actually the best tasting. So deep dish. What is the difference between deep dish and pan? I haven't had pan pizza since I was a – I used to do, like, book reports in yeah. third grade and get a pan pizza from right. <laughs> Pizza Hut. And that's the problem. I'm really – all I've really had pan pizza-wise is Pizza Hut, so it's not a great, like, comparison when I'm comparing Lou Malnati's versus Pizza Hut. Right, right. But pizza – what is a pan – it's pan pizza is, like, I maybe mean, half the thickness of a deep dish? Yeah, I would say at least half the thing. And it's not, like – yeah, it's not as saucy and cheesy. It's just kind of, like, doughy pan pizza. Okay. Start – or sit two of this group. Kamara, Herbert, St. Brown, Godwin, and London. Definitely London. Mm. If Montgomery plays, then it's easy. And you said Herbert. <sighs> yep. Uh, I'd still no. go same. If St. Brown plays and he's fully cleared, I'm going St. Brown. And no, we're sitting. We're sitting. Oh, we're sitting too. Right, okay. So you're sitting Drake London. Oh, then no, no, we're sitting London and Herbert if Montgomery plays. Or for me, you're not going to like this, but it's going to be Kamara. I guess it's just such a good matchup. It is. Yeah, I can't sit Godwin or St. Brown. Me either. Okay. What is that? What is a couple more here. Yeah, go for it. Uh, uh, to... Olave, when you call me Big Papa. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I traded Juju for Zeke. Was that a good idea? I don't love it, but at the same time, Adam made a great point earlier. We still have so much upside potential if Dak comes back and turns that back into like a top five offense. And then Zeke is in getting a ton of scoring opportunities on a weekly basis. So I don't hate this. I think there's upside to Zeke. Uh, your producer, Zach. Zach, get on here. <laughs> Ray Mysterio. Son, Dominic. I don't even know who that is. Pull yeah, the side-by-side -side view to compare. Can you, you get a picture of Dominic Mysterio or Ray Mysterio's son, Dominic? So I might, I'm going to look this up right now. Yeah, I'm very curious. Post. Dominic Mysterio. I used, to, I used to love wrestling as a kid. I don't watch anymore, but I used to love wrestling. Oh my God, he does look like him. I don't look oh, like this guy at all. This yes, is... you do. No, no, bring it, bring a screen. No, yes, I'm, you I'm do. Sharing, I'm sharing it. Yeah, share this screen. Uh, not as much as I'm seeing more pictures. The first <laughs> one, you looked a lot like him. Yeah, so there's another one. You look like him. It's the haircut, I think, mostly. Let's see. No way. Oh yeah, I think so. I think so. 
Yeah, I can see it. Oh, I can. This looks like it's identical right now. Nah, not at all. I don't see it. You really it. swung, Dan, from like identical, not it, not really. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. The more I see, the more I see it. You're on a roller coaster. Right, one more question here. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, C.D. Lamb, Justin Herbert, give all them up. That's Dobbins, Lamb, and Herbert for Jonathan Taylor and Stefan Diggs, and he still has Jalen Hurts. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I would do that, I think. That's a good trade for both teams. Yeah, I like it's a win for both. All right. Thanks, everybody. I don't like wins for both teams. I only like wins where you crush <laughs> your opponent. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Much appreciated. Thanks for listening. Hope you have a great weekend. For Dan Schneier, I'm Adam Hayes. This is the best. We'll talk to you on Sunday of Fantasy Football today. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs>